you can't give what you don't have. Uh -huh. When you are talking about integrity, you are really talking about the, the, the real person. Who that person is. Uh, when you talk of integrity, you talk of honesty. To be honest. And to be honest means to be trustworthy. To be truthful. And politics is science and art of government. Uh, politics is about the people. Yes. And uh, if you talk about it in a deeper sense, it has to do with how people take decisions on how to lead themselves. The tension between Fulani Etsmen and farming communities has existed for many years now, but has seen a dramatic escalation in recent times to include attacks, rape, kidnappings and killings by the nomads. The group has wrapped havoc enough to be acknowledged by the global community as the fourth deadliest terror group in the world. On this episode of Questions in Politics, we will be discussing the deadly influx of Fulani men. And in the studio with me today to discuss this topic is Reverend Canon Benjamin Hagwejume. He's a priest of the Diocese of Abuja Anglican Communion. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. In now with me to Verabujio Nwaya, Director of Civic and Political Affairs, Church of Nigeria, and the Chaplain to the National Assembly. Thank you. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you for having Thank me. you, sir. Um, let me start um, um, with uh, Canon, sir. What do you make of uh, this uh, old situation of uh, insecurity, especially when it comes to foreign aid men in the country? Yeah, the issue of uh, foreign aid men has become a security threat to the entire nation. And uh, looking at the security, fragile security situation of our country, and uh, looking at the political angle of uh, this Fulani Hessman, one will see that uh, the problem of uh, Fulani Hessman is politically motivated because. Uh, since 1999, when uh, uh, democracy uh, came to stay in Nigeria, after the 1999 election, you see in uh, various states where you have a, a particular ethnic group like the Fulanis and others, such as states like uh, uh, Nasarawa, uh, plateau, where you have incessant crisis, especially when a particular government is in power mm. and the opposition will use means of uh, destabilizing that government in power to cause uh, havoc. And uh, immediately this uh, government came into power and the opposition took over those states. You see that uh, states like uh, Plateau now are now enjoying relative peace, and even uh, uh, Nasarawa. Now, after this election, after this last election, people raised an alarm that uh, the Boko Haram in uh, Borno State, because before the election, what we normally hear is a uh, cattle rustling, and most of these cattle rustling are done among the Fulanis. <coughs> are done among the Fulanis, the cattle rustlers, um, the Fulanis, because I've not seen somebody from the south or the west or the east arrested and, uh, as, 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 as a, as a, a cattle rustler. So after the election, people raised an alarm that uh, most people, most of the Boko Haram uh, terrorists in the north uh, moving down south in the guise of a uh, hessman 
And the government did not uh, do anything. That alarm was not uh, taken serious until we heard of uh, the killing in Enugu, Anambra, Delta, so on and so forth. And uh, what was uh, really surprising was uh, when Anambra own took place. And the commissioner of police in that state said he has not received uh, any command from uh, the center that is Abuja, so he cannot do anything. And the whole community was wiped out. The whole community was wiped out. And to date, the federal government has never done anything to assuage or to really do something to convince the people that the government is really interested in the security of lives and property of the people. Uh, but, but if, if I may come in, that uh, very but he he has made mention of uh, uh, some of this crisis being politically motivated. Uh, is that your own view? And uh, uh, has it been that the government and uh, of any other party or whatever has not been taking the lives of its citizens so seriously? Well. Uh, the problem uh, has different uh, angle, especially this Fulani Esme attack. The, you cannot rule out the political angle. You cannot also rule out the religious angle. Mm -hmm. And you cannot rule out the economic angle. Uh, if I may start from the economic angle, the truth is that there is a problem in the far north. Desertification is really eating deeper and deeper into the country. The lechide uh, is drying up more and more. And uh, you know, these cows depend on the pastures and they, they want to move to the southern part and the western part where you still have green grass all over. That is purely from the economic angle. But you will also know that if I'm a herdsman, for instance, and I know that I'm having problem of getting pasture in my own area mm. where I've been over the years, mm. and I want to move down to a place where you have greener pasture, I will do it peacefully. I will approach the people there negotiate, maybe have a piece of land and all that. It's, I can't you know, just carry my cows, go to yes, such yes. a place yes, and yes. begin to sack people from their farm and hold AK-47 and be shooting people mm -hmm. and be raping women and all that. So to a large extent, it has a, a economic uh, angle mm -hmm. to it. Then. For the political angle, you cannot rule it out at all. You cannot rule political angle out at all. Because what I'm seeing is not only just his men. Uh, people from the far north, whether they have business to do or not, in the, in the south or in the west, are just flocking in, I don't know why. I, I, if you go to my area in Edo State, I just came back from leave and I was shocked at the number of uh, people from the far north, some of them looking like uh, Chinese and uh, uh, looking very strange faces. Some of them, uh, you can't even, you, you don't really know what is happening. They are all <laughs> hanging around in all our communities, in villages, everywhere, doing nothing. Then you begin to wonder what is behind this uh, movement of uh, people down south and uh, uh, to the eastern part of the country and the western part. So to me, that has political implication, even for the next election, mm. because these people uh, certainly we begin to register in these areas yes. uh -huh. and when it comes to election it is then you discover clearly that there's a political dimension to what is happening okay. then the 
Because before I should relocate from where I am to another place, there should be something attractive, there should be something constructive that I'm going there to do. Not to relocate from my father's house or from my community and go to another community to go and be hanging on in an uncompleted building mm. and doing nothing. So there's certainly political undertone to what is going on. Then the uh, is it the security angle you were talking? The, the religious angle. Uh, the religious angle. The religious angle to either one cannot be swept under the carpet. I've always said that. I, I, I see this as a something that is well thought out, something that is well planned, mm. and all that. Because as these people are moving, they are establishing their religion in every nook and corner of these very places they are moving into. And even the, the not this immediate uh, uh, Salah festival that have just been uh, concluded, the, pre the previous one uh, that they did, I was surprised that when a report was to be given by a national television uh, about uh, was it Ed Ed Cabri or festival or something like that? They started from Muyo, from Muyo to Calabar, from Calabar to Portacot, from Portacot to Bayesa, from Bayesa to Wari, and all that. Then I begin to wonder uh, how come the report is to be made on the. Uh, this kind of festival and the national television felt the place to start is this area that we all know are not predominantly I mean uh, for I mean occupied by adherents of that religion before mm -hmm. why did they start from Sokoto why did they start from Kano so it's like to me it was a way of saying let's show to the world that we have taken over these areas already mm -hmm. it's an evangelist uh, evangelical strategy it's a strategy it's a crusade strategy so to me there is religious angle and they don't forget the man that uh, for the world that conquered the Hausa communities said they will not stop until they put their sword in the Atlantic Ocean. I, I feel that is part of what is playing out gradually. You cannot sweep that under the carpet. Mm -hmm. So there are so many angles to it, but whichever angle, what we need to do is to appeal to government because this country just needs peace. Uh, 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 the, the canon, I, I, you, you, you put up something straight that I, I would have uh, want us to go deeper into it. A government that has uh, come up with uh, a sense of diversification of economy yeah. uh, into agriculture yeah. and uh, is facing uh, this kind of threat, uh, what would have felt that the government should be more proactive in curtailing all these uh, uh, urban issues, especially on farmlands? Yeah. What do you What do you think uh, from your own observation? That is the body language, uh, or may I say, it's just a nonchalant attitude of every government that is in power. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start from where Venerable stopped on the area of uh, the economic angle of these uh, uh, S-men uh, killings. Because before now, the S-men, the nomads, they have been coming down south to to uh, feed their cows, mm. and this issue of uh, S-men killings, raping, maiming, and uh, stealing was not there. Really. Was not there, mm. and uh, I this is a recent development because these killings started just about three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And before now, because 
like what you said, no serious government, because Nigeria is not a, a mono uh, economic, economic uh, country, uh, especially in the area of uh, agriculture. You have diverse areas that uh, you can use in diversifying uh, we are the, presently concentrating the on oil. On oil. But now, if the f uh, federal government says that uh, they want to diversify the economy by going into agriculture, if you are going into agriculture, the Minister for Agriculture said they are importing grasses from Brazil to come and uh, feed the cows in Nigeria. You ask yourself certain questions. In this 21st century, where people are creating jobs, where people are opening up their economy, is it the right thing to do? Nigeria has the best arable land in the entire world that you can grow any type of grass mm. with which you can feed the cattle. If there is no ulterior motive, how many cattle since that policy started, how many cattle have they fed? Are the Fulani S men not still moving down to the south? And this brings us to the area of uh, uh, the grazing bill that is in the National Assembly. Because the government is not really serious in the area of diversifying the economy. The government is not serious. Because you cannot say you are diversifying the economy and you destroy the agricultural life in the south, mm. in the west, and in the east. If these people continue to kill, to maim, and to rape women in the south, in the west, and in the east, how do the people go into agriculture? Somebody will invest millions and billions in, ag in, in, in uh, farming just to wake up one day and discover that uh, the herdsmen <laughs> and their cattle have destroyed everything he labored for. Do you encourage that person to go back into farming? So the government is not really, 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 really uh, sincere in telling Nigerians that she's trying to diversify Nigerian economy. Yeah, yeah. May, may I okay. just say something yes, on that, talking about people coming in to invest? Uh, one particular case really made me sad. I, I watched it and uh, it, it was a clip that was sent to me and uh, the, it's from a do state, there was a particular person that uh, decided to relocate. He put everything in the clip when the governor visited them in uh, the Western world and uh, addressed those in diaspora. And he decided to come and invest money in agriculture. Mm. He, he showed the, the vast land that he bought in Edo State and uh, how he started and you needed to see the number of people that he employed. They were ready to go into integrated farming, farming. where you have different angles to eat. They planted a lot of things, planted corn, uh, so many things. But when they started showing, when cows came in, and were ravaging the whole place, it was terrible. Even they showed some of the staffs, youths that were employed, who, who were killed in cold blood. You know, you, it was horrible. And why, why did they produce the clip? It was appealing to the governor of a do state, God do not pass like that. Look at what you came to do. Look at his response. Look at the money he took from the bank to come and invest. Mm. And look at what has become of it. And he has gone back. So, I, I, I don't really know what the government wants the people to do. 
how you can imagine how sad that is for that for very investor. investor if you watch that very video clip you feel bad for this country you you now really see that uh, it's like government is not like my brother I've always is not too sincere about job creation whatsoever i if i was to be in government mm. everything would have been done to protect, protect. such farm to ensure that the jobs that man created uh, uh, are sustained and to ensure that that kind of system of farming, integrated farming, modernized farming was sustained. Mm. It, it would have been a kind of uh, an example for other people to copy from. Then still talking further on the diversification. You, my greatest worry is that People are not even willing to go to farm again because of this threat of his men. I stayed three weeks in a do state and I deliberately you know, interviewed people. You need to see the fear that is in the mind of old people in the village. Even my mom told me I don't go to farm again. Uh, all my children have warned me not to go again because of uh, the rate of killing, the rate of raping, you know, <laughs> in, uh, happening around around, the uh, around our farm. So mm. the, the, then I, I also interviewed some youths. Some of my colleagues, we attended secondary school together, primary school to, and secondary school together. I, I decided to go and look at a project, a skill acquisition center, the a federal government project that is abandoned in my community. So. I just to take some photograph to see if we can talk to some people. And in the process of doing that, I saw some of these youths. Mm. All of them uh, moving around at the back of houses and not. And I asked, them, uh, "What are you really doing?" They said they can't go to the May farmland to farm again. My, my venerable, so let they me are just hovering you. around the buildings. I, I mean, around the village, they said they can't do any serious family again. That is a horrible experience. <laughs> so the f the fear that this thing has a uh, triggered in, in, in the, the mindset of in the uh, mind of the people is just so terrible. much, and there's nothing nothing is happening. You you are not seeing any really visible or tangible step being taken either by this government in the center or by government at the state or at the local government level to stop this. Then, uh, just to also add this, there's one elderly man that uh, anytime I'm around, I visit, he always come around to greet me. He's one of the community leaders there. He told me there's a community very close to my own colleague, Mule Inile, in Ekboma, that what is going on there now, the report that is coming every day, cows are going into the farms, eating up maize, uh, corn that are planted, rice that plant, and the youth are reported. They have even gone to tell the Onoji of Ekboma uh, that look, do something, call these people to order before a major crisis is triggered. Mm -hmm. And he told me, look, that is a, 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 a war that is about to start because he can feel the tension that is building up in these youths. And when you look at some of these youths, mm -hmm. look at, oh God, you pity them. You but pity what, them what because... Do, what do you think people should start doing? Because uh, look at the issue of uh, uh, kidnapping and ritualist uh, yeah. in Lagos mm. and uh, people resulting to uh, uh, jungle justice. Yeah. Do we think uh, people should start uh, taking... Well, uh, I, I, I would say it's a sign of failure. What is happening is a sign of failure. Lack of confidence yeah, by yeah. the citizens in the ability of the, of the government to protect them. Mm. Take, for example, just last month, somebody went to his farm, a man went to his farm. He was killed by his men in Abudu area, in Orion, or local government area in Edo State. And what assurance can that government, the state government, the federal government, can give to the people of that community not to do everything possible to protect their lives? If in the process of looking for means of livelihood they are killed, 
women are rendered as uh, uh, untimely widows. Children are made to be fatherless because of the inability of uh, the present government mm -hmm. not being able to protect the lives and property of the people. Then, there is a question. Just this year, a minister in uh, uh, Nasarawa State, former minister, was kidnapped in his own farm. This is high and mighty in the society. That of uh, uh, Ekiti State is another example. Was also kidnapped in his own farm by his men. Then if those thought to be influential, who is who in the society that have gone into farming, can be kidnapped by his men, yes, man. then the ordinary man in the society but, uh, but uh, what do you think, what do you think people should start doing uh, because uh, I think uh, it's obvious that uh, security agencies and government are not really doing what uh, people expect them to do but I think is there worth is there a way that people can start looking inwards to see what they can do yeah the the truth is that asking people to look inward is calling for anarchy that is the truth uh, it, 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 i think the right thing to do is is uh, partly what we are doing here now to passionately call on those in the corridor of power to call on government to live up to the expectation of the people both at the national level uh, and at the state and local government level. It, it, they should know that uh, the primary aim of government is to secure lives, the lives and properties of, that, of the people, of the citizens of that very uh, nation. So if you ask the people or encourage the people to protect themselves, it can lead to uh, what we least expected. Mm. It, it, many communities are already setting up uh, vigilante groups, and uh, some of them are not only just setting up vigilante groups, they are arming themselves. So I, 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 I listen to the response uh, of uh, Unandi Kalu and uh, his group of recent consigning the uh, security outfit they set up. They said they are setting it up because they want to checkmate the activities of his men. So because government have not been able to uh, bring these people under control, you are giving room for individuals, for groups, for groups to be armed. Uh, to be armed to begin to be thinking of uh, uh, how to protect themselves. So uh, you are giving room for people to begin to think of uh, the fact that it's like they don't belong to this very system or this entity called Nigeria. If government don't live up to the expectations of the people, there will be no need. It, it, it's, we have the police. We have the... Uh, SSS, we have the civil, uh, the civil defense, we have the military, and all that. This is the, pr the reason why they are there. It's not to harass innocent citizens. <laughs> it, 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 police is not there to be collecting money on from uh, on the road. Yeah? The, uh, like when I traveled uh, la this last time, I was so uh, there was a point at a point I asked one of the police officers what is going is something missing that people are looking for <laughs> why from one checkpoint you are so seeing another that. checkpoint mm -hmm. from that checkpoint you are seeing another by the time I got to the fifth one I had to ask them come what is happening is so that I know whether I should go back I should turn back because it's embarrassing how can you put a checkpoint here in a two posts from there another checkpoint a two posts from there another checkpoint as is something did we is something missing in uh, those states that they are looking for meanwhile it, 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 these people are ravaging everywhere in the bush and mm. all that the, no them. policeman is there no one is trying to fish out these very people then you just line up yourself along the road harassing uh, travelers 
So the police are there to do this thing, this job. Mm. If it's getting out of hand, they can, the military are there to give them support. And I don't know why they cannot do it. I don't know why they have not done it. <laughs> it I think we need to uh, continue to appeal. I'll, I'll continue to emphasize that. We need to appeal to government at the center. It, we all want one Nigeria. Yes, we all want one Nigeria. And the only way to keep Nigeria together is to ensure that the right thing is done. Is okay. to ensure that the concerns of the people are taken care of. So if there's a uh, political will at the center, then it will trigger down. And we also want to talk to the state government. The people voted them in there to, to lead them, to protect them. Governors should be able to look at what is happening within the state and take and the right action. Let me, let me cut you short. The uh, viewers will be right back. There are some governors that have been doing one or two things to curtail this. We'll be discussing that in the part two. Join us after the break. The tension between Fulani headsmen and farming communities has existed for many years now but has seen a dramatic escalation in recent times to include attacks, rapes, kidnappings, and killings by the nomads. The group has wrecked havoc enough to be acknowledged by the global community as the fourth deadliest terror group in the world. The brutality and impunity with which the assailants operate with a regard for the law and sanctity of life is appalling. On the 22nd day of June 2017, there was a report of Fulani headsmen beheading a woman identified as Mrs. Margaret Udiemehi, who was a resident of Eastern West local government in Edo State. It's been reported that Fulani headsmen have converted the national stadium in Abuja into a fertile land for cattle pasture as weeds overtake the package B section of the $360 million facility. Sometime in August, Benue State Governor Samuel Utter raised the alarm that headsmen from neighboring countries had concluded plans to unleash terror on Benue State because the state enacted the anti grazing law. In July this year, the VC and the student of University of Abuja called on federal government to relocate the headsmen from the school premises. The FCT minister promised that the headsmen will be moved. In August this year, Fulani Hetzman reportedly raped a 72-year-old woman identified as Akinseye Tokoma on her farmland in Ore, Odigbo local government area of Ondo State. Also in August, it was gathered that a man identified as one Undu Bweze Oboro was attacked by a suspected Fulani Hetzman at his farm in Umane Ngene Bush in Enugu State. The suspect allegedly gave the victim matchet caught on his back, shoulder, and chopped off five of his fingers. Recently on September 2nd, Fulani Hetzman shot a farmer who had two wives and 12 children. The farmer identified as a mortgage in Oben community over on one local government area of Edo State. These and many more havoc are heard and seen all over the country on daily basis. Let's hear what Nigerians have to say about this. The, one of the solutions I can provide for Fulani Hesman is, I think um, something is done on that aspect already, educational. The current administration has been able to make the cutoff point of the uh, jump to 120. I, th I think that's going to go a long way to encourage the Northerners and um, the Fulanis that are in the bush to come out and attend schools. And um, one other solution I want to, uh, one other contribution I want to make is that the Northern Elites should look at it from the perspective that it can be their children. Because it is the children of the Telakawas that are doing these things. They won't allow their children to be involved. 
in this kind of act. Instead, they are sending their children abroad to study professional courses so that they can come back and take over from where they stopped. But one day, as Karl Marx said, that when people are angry, when people are hungry, they will be angry, and when people are angry, they will revolt. I'm afraid that this thing may backfire against them someday. Thank you very much. To um, the case making in general, the federal government should, as a matter of urgency, as a matter of necessity, act and make sure such acts are being stopped. Because um, the government of the day have um, a duty to maintain the security and lives of properties of her citizens. And when such or same is not being done, basically it is not acceptable by any sphere or strata of the society. And the masses are going to be the ones to suffer for it. Now basically with respect to the hair smackling, I feel the solution to it of the hair smackling in Nigeria for me should start first of all with the respect to the issue of legislations on the issue of grazing. And I believe that the grazing bill should be a matter of urgency and priority with respect to the National Assembly, where the National Assembly should make and pass the said grazing bill so as to legislate and regulate the grazing of animals or, or heads on farmlands of people. Because the problem, the challenge always has always been the issue of farmers and herdsmen fighting over who should take, who should, um, whose own source of living is of more priority. Is it the farm? for the farmers or the cattle for the herdsmen. So I feel the problem should be resolved by, first of all, legislating on the issue of the grazing bill. That was one. Then two, mapping out areas or locations within the um, society where the Fulani or the herdsmen, basically, would be given as a place for such cattle to graze upon and not going all through the streets of Abuja and other cities of, of the um, country, grazing and maybe patrolling on lands which are not theirs. It's, we know that basically in law they will say that um, grazing on the land which does not belong to you is merely and is clearly trespass. So when the government is able to legislate and make bills or pass laws with respect to the herdsmen issue, I feel that will be one of the major milestones with respect to resolving the crisis of the herdsmen in Nigeria. The causes is uh, about politics. It's about politics. Anybody that tells you it's a Christianity or, or a religious matter, it's, a, it's not saying the truth. But the, what I view on it is about politics. So if you can stop, you can stop that, that will work for us. So I believe that government should first of all uh, secure Nigerian border. Because if you look at the killings, uh, you discover that these have been done by people from maybe outside Nigeria. Because I believe those who are within the country, they have been so friendly that many of them have been living in that part of the, the, the state for a long time. So I think what government should do to me is, number one, make our borders secure. Then number two, that the government should find a solution to the full animals men that are going the states. They should find a particular place for them in the country where they can be taking care of them, uh, instead of going to different states to look for uh, uh, grazing. I think the issue of killing in Nigeria is becoming so worrisome that the government needs to do something fast about it. As far as I'm concerned, I think the killing is becoming much in the sense that the farmer can no longer go to the farm and face their occupation and the planning herdsmen are there killing them. I think the major issue there is that the full animals are taking the law out of their hand. If they really want to be sure of what they are doing, or they want to, like, let me say, if they feel like they are being mar marginalized, or being cheated, or being treated badly, they should walk to the government and launch their complaint. They shouldn't take the law into their hand by going to villages to burn down their houses and killing people. I think it's very, very, or call for. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I think government need, need to do something fast about that. I think the, the best way out is the the community which have been invaded by the flying headmen should be, it should be provided with security. I believe that if you have conscience and you have a brother, you will not be able to kill anyone or lie against anybody. Talk less of killing. 
But uh, I think those people that are killing, if they are well educated, I know it will go a long way. I think education is part of it. And if you have conscience, you, can, you will not kill your brother. That report you just listened to is uh, some of the things that are happening along, uh, across the country. And I want you to know that it's uh, one of the things we are discussing today. And with me in the studio has been uh, Reverend Canon Agbejume. Thanks for your thoughts. Uh, thank, thank you very much. And uh, also Venerable Jeo Daddy. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank well, you. Let's move ahead from where we stop we're, because we're about uh, coming into the state governors and uh, one or two state governors have taken some actions uh, over this issue. And uh, uh, Benue State has uh, passed into law the uh, anti grazing bill, uh, and I think uh, in Taraba too. And then uh, one of the governors that I think that started this uh, issue was the mm -hmm. governor of Ekiti, Ekiti State. State. And uh, we immediately passed into a law that when you see any cow on the farm, you should uh, report to the... Uh, and uh, most of those cows are being seized and the, 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 the cattle rustlers are taken care of in that state. Do you think uh, more of these things, of these steps, of passing some of these laws, should be taken by other state governors, especially in the south, where uh, we have uh, a large number of movement of uh, these people into the farms. Yes, uh, let me use my state as a case study. Is the governor waiting for his old grandmama to be raped in the bush before he will know that he's going to do something? Is he waiting for the sister to be raped before he will take action? Is he waiting for his uncle to be killed? Has he enough money to share to all these relations so as to prevent them from going to farm as a governor? So, you see, the, the governors are only just deceiving themselves. And I'm telling you, some of them may not even have the, ch the chance of a second tenure hmm. from the way they are going. Because Nigerians are no longer in the dark ages everyone can see what is happening if you want to come back do the right thing protect the the life of the citizens that you are you are leading so if you are not ready to do it the people will not vote you back when the time comes we are not talking about a particular political party now mm. Whether you are in APC, whether you are in PDP or ABGA or whichever party you belong to, you just, as a governor, you just need to wake up to your own responsibility and protect the people that voted you into power. Things cannot be happening like this under the nose of a governor and is pretending as if nothing exactly. is happening. The only reason why they are doing that is because they don't want to hurt some particular interest uh, in the country and that they feel by so doing they will have a chance what, what of coming are, what back. What are actually these interests? Uh, come on, I don't know if you've <laughs> noticed <laughs> something <laughs> that I noticed. Yeah, Look yeah. at the city of Abuja. Yeah. You see cows in areas like Maitama, in Guarimpa, where there are yeah. no even grasses. Yeah. And you ask what is happening. Yeah, the interest here, looking at Nigeria, the configuration, the political uh, uh, landscape, now. landscape, so on and so forth, with a president who is made the chairman of Cattle Breeders Association, not only, even only in Nigeria, yeah. in West Africa region, mm. who is also a Fulani by tribe and the people who are behind these killings are Fulanis. they are s men i think this takes us to devolution of power or restructuring that uh, nigerians are clamoring for because fire just has to do his best against the wishes and the interests of those at the center mm. 
is just a courageous man and he takes courage to do what these governors are doing right. governor of uh, kiti uh, benwe and uh, taraba because they have discovered that they have no option because it is very very disappointing for a governor to be the chief security officer of a state mm. and uh, the state assemblies will pass laws but they don't have the power to yeah, enforce those laws because the power to enforce those laws still lies with the center they control the police they control the the state security service they control the army they control everything when, when you look at because now the governors have become so helpless and some of them they are also playing to the gallery because they are looking forward to second tenor even the state assembly members they are looking forward to another term mm -hmm. so nobody want to pass a uh, law that right. will make him the enemy of the government at the center but they forgot that the primary responsibility of uh, any government is to protect the lives and properties of uh, its citizens. So if you have a government that cannot protect the lives and property of its citizens, and you have a government at the center that is so tribalistic, then Nigerians... Sorry. Because you asked a question the other time, that now that uh, the citizens have lost confidence in the security apparatus of the country, what would they do? I think this is where media houses, both print and electronic media houses, must do a lot. Also, religious bodies and non-governmental organizations have to come in. Because the security, the unity of this country cannot be toyed with because if we must say Nigeria must be one you cannot use the economy of the north to destroy the economy of the south the south cannot be the only one sacrificing their lives for the unity of Nigeria but uh, can some, someone has said something uh, uh, in some research being found that most of these cows are even owned by the politicians themselves we have had things like that and uh, it's not far from the truth because uh, uh, the these herdsmen that are roaming about in the bush killing and uh, maiming people you, you, if you look at them you, you know clearly that these are not really the owners of these cows they are not the real owners and that is why we keep talking that they, so they th is that why the government is unable to hack because uh, these are the people that own the cow. They are they are the ones in the government. They are the ones to enact the law and to order for the enforcement of the law. Is that why we are seeing the negligence in that aspect? Well, uh, I, 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 it's part of it. It's part of it because if, uh, for instance, I'm one of the owners of the cows and uh, I'm out there, uh, I will want to kind of protect my interest first, especially if I'm not a patriotic Nigerian. I want to protect my interest first. And that is what my brother has said. The some the most of the people that are in government today have one link or the other with these very people. Mm. Uh, from the top down. So you can't rule out that. You can't rule out that. But whether uh, we like it or not, the, do, the people that are behind these things should know that they are jeopardizing the security of this country. They are the one giving room for people to be, you know, talking about self-determination now. They are the people giving room for people to be talking about uh, uh, a secession. secession. They are the one, you see, they are, they are the one to be held responsible for this thing. So is getting... Uh cattle ranches um is it a solution it is hand? it is the solution it is the solution is it so only like who is the who is who should be responsible for getting those ranches ah uh, it's a private it's business now you are it's like you are asking me i want to uh start go into fishing uh, go into fishing who should be responsible for your fish for, pond for, for for my fish pond 
Are you the one to be responsible? Is, is it government? And if I want to do fish pond, I should go and look for a land uh, where I can uh, make my fish pond. I should look for a, a go to swampy area. Uh, which would be good for it and negotiate with the people if I have to buy, if I have to rent, I have to rent. It's like asking, you, I want to do cement business. You are asking me who should be responsible for the renting of my shop for me. I should be responsible. A cattle rearing is just a one tiny business in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. There are so many other businesses going on in this country. So it's not government that is helping people to, to, to do their businesses. It's supposed to be the private uh, affair of people. They should go and get ranches and they take care of their car. And by the way, you see, where it is funny, why is it that uh, these people are not willing to go into the ranch system? Go to overseas. If you go to some ranches in abroad, it will be like a, a, a tourist center. You want to go and see beautiful, you no know, well-built cows. You see you no know, cows that can uh, produce milk. You see cows that uh, are no well to do, well fed. They are well taken care of. Veterinary doctors are able to come in to take proper care yeah. of all these things. So it's a real business and uh, it's not something to be done wondering about. This is it's a primitive way of uh, going about it. You want that? Yeah, something? I want to say something. Because if we are looking at it from the angle venerable just uh, uh, said now, we must look beyond that. Because we just you just talked about uh, uh, when uh, Idel Kabe was celebrated and uh, the reports, the first five or ten reports that was, that given, was by given were from the south. From the south. Now, you now look at it. In the cattle ranching is not the problem. Yeah. There is a religious angle so the to the issue. Because if these cattle uh, rearers continue moving down to the south even those places that you think nobody can penetrate tomorrow if there is any crisis in, in Nigeria hardly you will see south, south, southerners in some villages and areas in the north but these people they have access to enter anywhere and if you try to stop them they take your life so sir who should stop this just is, before is, Government. It's government. government. The uh, if because if the government is saying that uh, cattle farming has become a national business, business. then every other business should then be nationalized. Every, every other business should be nationalized. Okay, then the cattle farming, cattle rearing, what income is this mm. business generating into the national coffer? Nothing. Every month, they are busy sharing allocation to states. These states that uh, you have these cattle rearers and their uh, sponsors, they are mm, uh, basically from the north. So, and so these are the same states that are not contributing one naira. So let, let's just, uh, as we round up, let's look at what, what should be the, the, the uh, how should the church come into this? How, how, how can the church help this situation, our, our church leaders? How should they come into this? Yes, uh, two things. Now, first of all, we <laughs> will continue to pray uh, for this nation. We should continue to pray for our leaders, for God to really open their eyes to see the damage that is being done under their nose to this very country. God will certainly hold leaders accountable for whatsoever happened to the nation Nigeria. And so the church need to continue to pray. Uh, it's a matter of duty for the leaders and I think the church is doing that. Then secondly, the church will not keep quiet. The church will be the voice of the people the voice of the downtrodden. The church should continue to speak the truth. 
the church should continue to talk to those in the corridor of power. Every man of God who is what that office is occupying should continue to speak out against evil, not just the headsmen, menace alone, against all the vices that is That's going on in this very country. The church should be a serious pressure group to mount pressure on um. every government that is in power, irrespective of uh, the, uh, the party that is in power. The church should continue to mount pressure on government to do the right, the right thing. thing in every aspect. Is it in infrastructure? Is it uh, in this security? Is it a, a creation of a job to uh, address the unemployment in the country? Is it the, in the area of indiscipline or corruption? The church should not keep quiet. Reverend, I, I, I just wanted to give, what, what's your last take on this in 60 seconds? Yeah, the government should not pay lip service to security issues because the unity of Nigeria depends on how the economic situation of this country is handled. I don't think that there is no region in this country that is a second class region and there is no particular region that should be a first class region. I don't think that there is a, the South should be made to be the, the sacrificial lamb at all times because mm -hmm. most cases they will say that uh, uh, unity of Nigeria is non-negotiable. Unity of Nigeria is negotiable if the government continue to fail in our responsibility and our duties. Because I cannot live in a country where I am considered a second class. My, somebody will come from a particular region and come and kill my father and kill my mother and we say we should live together as one, my brother. That cannot be. That will even lead to more agitation of secession, of uh, a restructuring, and all kinds of uh, agitations. If this government want Nigeria to remain as one country, then everybody must be treated equally. The man planting okra in the south must be given a f the freedom that the man who is a, a cattle rearer in the north is enjoying. You cannot give one a, a particular kind of trade prominence over the other. You are importing how many, how many, how many uh, fish, uh, uh, fishes and uh, 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 things have the government imported for farmers in the south. Mm. So you see that Nigerians are not treated equally. Thank you. The, 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 if I may just chip in, there's need for disarmament. The I don't know the reason why uh, the government is closing eyes against the issue of AK-47 that all these headsmen are carrying about everywhere. I mean, there, there must be a tangible thing done in oh, that right. area to disarm these headsmen. All right. Thank you very much, Venerable uh, J.O. Noya and uh, Reverend Cannon. Thank you. Um, thank you for your thoughts, sir. The federal government's response to the crisis has been widely criticized by Nigerian press, as well as the majority of the Nigerian populace has been inadequate. Increasingly, the attack has been viewed as motivated along religious and ethnic lines. There seems to be a little or no interest to address some of these historic grievances concerning grazing at the national level of government. Most of the discussion seems to be taking place at the state level, with some governors keen to engage with farmers and ad men to try to seek some sort of workable solution, while others are adopting a more hostile approach through tightening restrictions on nomadic ad men practices. The federal government's plan to allocate grazing reserve was rejected by Nigerians' parliament. Therefore, 
the federal government should come up with a superior alternative. Also, religious leaders, traditional rulers, should wake up to their responsibility for peace to reign in the land. I uh, want to appreciate you for being with us on this episode this week. Join us same time, same station next week for another topic. God bless you. I remain Korede Akitunde. Thank you.